Hello there everybody, greetings and welcome. It's Peter Cass here. I'm sorry I haven't had a chance to do a Minutes to Mastery for quite some time. I've been running around the place teaching and today we're going to talk about the requirements for head CT in minor head injury patients. Uh, there's a write-up of this on the blog if you go to the blog up the top there. Um, however, we want to cover a few more of the details in video format for those low risk patients or the minor head injury, I should say, high risk patients. So we'll talk about that first off. I just want to show off a little video of our airway workshop recently at my hospital, Royal Prince Alfred Hospital. And I also uh, wanted to uh, briefly mention an upcoming new thing we've got on. And then we're going to talk about the head CT in trauma. Hello everybody, greetings and welcome. This is an airway workshop we just finished doing at Royal Prince Alfred Hospital in Sydney. Everybody who came along was outstanding. They played all out on the day, as you can see here, and uh, got a lot of skills under their belt. If you missed out on being able to get into that workshop, there's a lot of others coming up, and we're proud to announce our new airway CPR, cardiac resuscitation and trauma workshop. So go and have a look at that and come along and improve those skills. I'll see you there. Head CT. Now we've got head injury can be classified as very severe head injury, moderate and minor head injury. It's mostly it's got to do with the Glasgow Coma Scale or the GCS. Now it's pardon the pun, but a no-brainer when somebody comes in who's quite unwell, and so they need a, a CAT scan. They had a major trauma, a incredible mechanism. Their Glasgow Coma Scale is depressed. They need a CT. But there is a group, and that's usually those with a Glasgow Coma Scale of 14 or 15. Uh, that have had a minor head injury and we're kind of not sure whether we need to do a CAT scan. In many cases, what complicates factors is that these guys are intoxicated and they always seem to have been abused by these two dudes. I was minding my own business and these two dudes attacked me. So let's look at a case. We had a case recently of a young chap who came in. Uh, he reported that he'd opened his door and there were these two dudes standing there and they attacked him unprovoked. Uh, he sustained a loss of consciousness and he had an amnesic episode for about half an hour or so. Now, there are criteria that we can apply to this. Now, he ended up having a Glasgow Coma scale of about 13 or 14 for a significant part of the night before he was handed over to me in the morning round. Now, it works out that he'd also had a fair bit to drink. So they're a little bit difficult to assess these patients. Now, there's some schools of thinking that say you just scan them all straight away. Now, in a position of unlimited resources, that's fine, but the reality of what we have is that these patients come in at night intoxicated, and some of the best thing we can do for them is close neurological observation with frequent neuroobs, and then take it from there. But there is that group of the minor head injury that have some high-risk components, and the Canadian CT uh, head rules should be known by people because they give us a very good indication of who to uh, uh, who to scan, and amongst them, you know, like all Canadian stuff, it's uh, age above 65 and a mechanism of injury and a few other things, and you should look that up. Okay, so I have a way of remembering and what patients in this group of minor head injury uh, that have some high risk features I need to order a CT, and I remember it by the word haggle but H-A-G-L-E, because I have to haggle with the radiology reg in order to get a CT head done. So usually, the way I think about it is, anybody greater than age 65 uh, that is on anticoagulants and that has haggle, and we'll talk about some of these, so H stands for a significant headache, A stands for an amnesic episode, usually greater than about 30 minutes. Now, this amnesia, they may never get back. G stands for a Glasgow Coma Scale that is less than 15, uh, certainly within a couple of hours of their presentation, still less than 15. And the complicating factor here is that a lot of these guys have alcohol on board or some other drugs. And so in those, you're going to have to make a decision about whether you scan them or not. The L stands for they've had a loss of consciousness and the E stands for emesis, so they're vomiting and usually greater than a couple of vomits. So haggle, H for headache, A for an amnesic episode, uh, they've lost about 30 minutes of memory or more. G, for Glasgow Coma Scale of 15, or less than 15, that persists, 
for more than a couple of hours after presentation. L for they've had a loss of consciousness and E for emesis. And I add on to that age greater than 65 and if they're on anticoagulants, they, I pretty much fairly quickly give them a CT head. Now to sum up, this chap that came in, he had this loss of consciousness, an amnesic episode. He had some sort of strange diplopia on examination as well, but it wasn't uh, consistent. Uh, and I was a bit resistant in scanning him. I watched him, he improved, his GCS was 15, he looked fantastic. Uh, I handed him over to the other team who decided that they were going to scan him after that episode, and, and quite rightly probably, scan was normal. So remember the Peter Cass's haggle formula, um, and it'll allow you to haggle much more easily with the radiology registrar. Good luck in getting the CT. See you later, guys.